So this is gonna allow us, like that, to mount our caliper on the underside of the swing arm, which is kind of important on this bike, because if you look here, there's a weird angle. It's just the steel braided with a clear coat on it. They have the raised lip, so even as I pull on it, you can see it doesn't come out. So this is what's called forged carbon fiber. Yes, so it's yes. pieces of carbon pressed together very hard. Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eep here. Welcome to season seven of the new bike build series. This season, we're using a brand new 2020 BMW S1000 double R and a 2019 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory with the help of our channel sponsor, the magnificent Miami Manny from sunny Miami. We're going to turn both those bikes into something truly special and amazing. At the end of this build series, we're offering one lucky person the option to pick one of those fantastic machines. Information on how that person might be you is down below in the description. We've already given away eight motorcycles over the last few years, and this will be another spectacular machine once it's all done. But hey, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. And we've got some awesome things that we're gonna to do to this 2020 S1000RR. I believe some things that have never been done before to one of these bikes. And uh, Zach? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, buddy. We're back for another exciting episode of the new Bike Build Series. <laughs> yes. Turns out that even bugs love Hockingheim Silver. Oh, yeah. We had this thing coated because you were able to get majority of the miles on it over the weekend. I just added a couple more for good measure. Yep. And uh, so while you were gone, knocked out a first service on it. Nice. We got uh, our owner's manuals all stamped up, so you'll be up to date to keep your warranty good and well and alive. Okay. Let's see if I can find the page How many here. miles do we end up with? 430. Yeah, 430? Yeah, 429. Nice. So yeah, we got the official uh, ah. running in check and stamp. Yes. So that's good and important. And then this is what was actually done. You'll get a repair order. And uh, you can see we removed the engine rev limiter. So now you get the full motorcycle. Thank goodness. Yeah, that thing's super annoying. Yes. And uh, pretty much just an oil change, a bunch of checks, clean the chain and stuff. But that's all getting replaced anyway, so it yes. doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Also took and installed a WRS ah. tinted taller windscreen. Thank good. That, that makes the bike look really nice, it man. Does. It does. It really goes well. And it adds well. some protection, too, when you're on the road. Yeah, it's a lot larger. It has the double mm -hmm. bubble shape, so it should create a bigger wind uh, tunnel effect over you, you know, so your helmet's not buffeting and stuff. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think that's all I really put on the motorcycle and did to the motorcycle. Okay. Uh, I raised the shift light up and oh, all nice. that kind of stuff. Sweet. And uh, so today though, we got some awesome cool parts. We were teasing them before. Yep. We're gonna mount up uh, one of the first Brembo rear calipers. Oh. Underslung. Ooh, yes, piece of jewelry. For our underslung swing arm using a brand new part that TWM makes and is available on Moto Million, as you can see here. Yep. Let me get this, let me ditch this over here. So this is gonna allow us, like that, to mount our caliper on the underside of the swing arm. Wow. And uh, once we get it mounted up, we'll explain why we're doing this and why it's so cool. All right, so also while we were gone, I popped on these TWN, uh, TWM uh, swing arm spools which is kind of important on this bike, because if you look here, there's a weird angle. So if you pick up this bike with pads on your uh, rear stand, you gotta be careful, it wants to slide off. Oh. And it actually can slide all the way off. So we got them on to make it easier to work. Yep, the pit bull stand. And the pit bull stand, super easy, nice and stable, great combination. Yes. Um, I'm gonna leave the chain on for now. So basically what we're doing is we're taking this rear caliper, which is a Brembo component, you can see. Yes. And, uh, but we can't mount it on the bottom side here. Yes. So we're gonna get rid of all this stuff and mount that up. So first off, we gotta sump the brake system, which just is a fancy word for saying, let's get rid of all the brake fluid. Okay, next up, we'll just cut some zip lines that are following our brake line. We're gonna change the brake line that goes up to the ABS box. We're gonna use one of our uh, trusted components, the Friend Tubo brake line. You can see it's not the carbon fiber one though. It's just the uh, steel braided with a clear coat on it. It's got a nice little color to it. The reason we have to change it is because this brake line would be too short because now we have to go from up at the ABS box all the way down around the swing arm like uh -huh. so. Yep. So this brake line is what's gonna give us the ability to do that. All right, so we got our wheel off and part of what we're gonna do involves the wheel spacers. So if you look at this wheel spacer, it has a raised edge just on the outside, Yes. which uh, 
that just helps you slide it in and everything. The wheel spacer we're going to change it out with also has a raised edge on the inside so it'll stick inside the seal so we don't have to worry about these falling out. Ah, because part of the reason we want to move this caliper to the underside of the swing arm is it's going to make our tire changes way easier. <laughs> yes. It's not going to be a complete quick change kit. It's close because I don't think the rear wheel is not going to sit here by itself. Yeah. We're still gonna, we'll, we are still going to have to line it up, but we don't have to worry about wheel spacers and we're going to drop the wheel right in the caliper instead of having to feed the wheel in. So with our current setup, when we put the wheel on, we have to put this wheel partially in. We have to get our caliper bracket slid into position. Yep. And then we have to spread our brake pads and then I have to lift the wheel up into the brake pad, okay? Yes. yes. Once I get the new mount on and our caliper is underneath, I'm gonna be able to just pick our wheel up, drop it in the oh. caliper, and then just loop the chain over. It makes sense. And then our axles are gonna be set because we're gonna have the nice, uh, awesome chain adjusters. So yes. it's just gonna make it way easier to change the wheel. Now with the stock wheel, obviously our wheel spacers are not retained, they fall out. So TWM Components also came up with a solution to that. We have the BMW rear wheel spacers. Ah, nice. Obviously, the larger ones for the chain side, smaller ones for our brake side. And like I was saying, they have the raised lip on the inside there. Yes. So that it's going to be a little hard to get in. I'm going to have to like rock it. But now that it's in there, it doesn't come back out. Yep. Without, ha without putting torsional force on it. Yes. And it's a lot more wash and flat. So we'll put the larger one over here. Plus they look really nice. They do. I don't know how much you're gonna see it once it's on the bike, but they look great. Okay, so first thing we gotta do to get our uh, chain adjusters on, we're gonna pull out our factory chain adjuster screw. You can see it's nice and long. So once you break it free, you might wanna bring out the drill, get this job done. I'm gonna leave the chain on just for the time being, but it is getting a new chain. We got a 520 kit. Yep. We got an awesome rear, hard anodized Vortex rear sprocket. It looks awesome. Yes. So you can see we got labels on our secondary mounting part here for right and left, so that's nice. Makes it simple. And other than that, we should have one bolt that's gonna go in the front there, probably this guy right here. Put a little blue Loctite on it because we don't want it to go anywhere. And it's a little awkward to tighten in there. Okay. I think we'll have to use the ball end, Alan. Also, I was just looking for the first time myself at the left-hand one, <laughs> and it actually has the torque spec for your rear axle. Nice, that right is there. actually awesome. Yeah. We're gonna have to, the only thing that we don't have is a cool rear, rear axle nut. But yeah, we're gonna have to get one because we yeah. usually don't put the sliders on because of the pit bull restraint system. But otherwise, install is the same on this side. I'm also gonna put a little blue Loctite on the two screws that hold the back plate. Sounds like a good idea to me. Now it is important you remember when you have this style chain adjuster that you loosen the axle when you twist this yes. uh, to adjust your chain. Otherwise you risk stripping it out. I don't okay. want to do that. So as you can see, super easy install, great upgrade, makes it real nice to adjust your chain, loses uh, axle spacers that would fall out of the swing arm otherwise, and they look great with they the do. Italian flag and the black coloring and laser etching on them. And yes. It looks really cool. I love that it has a torque spec on it. All right, so first thing we got to do is get the banjo bolt out of the caliper, and we got to take the ABS sensor off. So let's do the ABS sensor first. Looks like we got just a couple little plastic rivets or plastic screws, whatever you want to call them, on our fender hugger here. Ah, maybe I can get away with just the one because the brake line routes underneath. Yep, we got it. Sweet. Nice. You want to be careful by paint with brake fluid because there's always a little bit of brake fluid left in there. You don't want to get it on your paint. Yes. If you do, just spray it off with a little bit of water. Water will keep it from eating the paint. All right, so I got the brake line tightened up up top. This current line at least didn't fit in the guide, so we just went right next to the guide. It's not rubbing on anything. The only bummer part would be if we needed to unplug the ABS box, we're gonna have to pull the rear brake line. Okay. Not far from the end of the world, just not convenient. I, can, I haven't had a reason to unplug an ABS box yet, so it shouldn't really matter. All right, so I got the brake line routed. Pretty with, happy with how it went. It's not close to the exhaust. It's not close to the wheel. Uh, we, the ABS line, there was plenty of slack in it, so that's awesome. Uh, torqued up the bolts for the caliper, and now we can show you how it all fits together because we got to put the wheel on so we can bleed the brake system out. Okay. We got to fill the system back up with fluid. Right now it's just full of air, and it does nothing. 
So I'm going to take my little wood block like I showed you and just shove it between the brake pads here. Okay. And this is the whole reason, this is one of the main reasons I'd say you would want to use this system on your motorcycle. Besides the fact that you can run the really nice Brembo caliper, which looks amazing. It does. And uh, lower the center of gravity is now when you go to put your wheel back in, we can just move our chain up to the back of our chain adjuster, keep it on this side. And then I gotta fin you gotta finagle it just a little bit past the caliper here so you don't scratch your wheel. But once you're in this far, look, everything's still hanging. Yes. I'm gonna be able to just pick this wheel up, easily set it in the caliper here, where usually I'd be fighting with wheel spacers. Yep. See my piece of wood flat? And now yes. the wheel is retained just like this. Wow. So super simple. And not to mention it looks great. Not to mention it looks great. And then we just need to slide our bracket forward a bit to line it up with our axle axle chain adjusters. And now easily, I mean, you guys have watched me fight a million times putting rear wheels on, right? Yes. We watched you do it for about 45 minutes one <laughs> yes, day. Yes, we did, a time lapse. Yeah. This is just gonna go straight through. It locks in place. Oh, wow. And bam. Okay, I like to keep the bleeder hose going in upward as much as possible. And then I'm just gonna fill this guy up. And you can see the air is already escaping up to the top. Those are the bubbles forming up there. Air always wants to go to the highest spot. So luckily this is much higher than that. Yes. And you can see as the air comes up, the fluid level is actually dropping. We'll be down to the minimum here in just a second without even doing any work. It's bleeding itself. but eventually it'll stop. And then that's where our vacuum bleeder comes in handy. We just flip this and it's gonna suck brake fluid through the system. We just can't let it suck any air. So now I have to work. I'm, I'm just gonna push the pedal slowly a couple times and it should start lowering this fluid level, which it has. And I already feel I have resistance. So I do have some braking going on, but it's gonna get better. I'm gonna open up the bleeder by hand and push the pedal. See those air bubbles come out? I don't know if you happen to catch them in the hose. They're gonna be in this hose here. Oh. I don't know if we're gonna have any more or not, but keep your eye on this hose right here. See where the okay. fluid is there? Yep. So when I open this and push, nope, no more air bubbles. So we just wanna do this a couple times to make sure that no air is in the system. Okay. Because air does not compress like the liquid and that's what gives you your mushy feeling brake pedal. And the reason we wanna change brake fluid after every so many track days or every two years at a minimum is it's hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture from the air. Mm -hmm. And then that moisture boils at a lower temperature than the brake fluid. So when your brakes get hot, they can fade or you can wind up with no brake feel, Jeez, which is okay. not good. No. Usually leads to agriculture experiences. Yes, that we don't like. <laughs> Those sparks hurt me and I'm standing back. That has to hurt you, Zach. Nope, didn't feel a thing. Wow. So just to show the parts that we mounted today, we have the TWM chain adjusters, and then we have the TWM rear caliper bracket, the Brembo underslung rear caliper, pro tie forged titanium bolts. Yep. Super easy to pull our axle out and our wheel out. And what makes this all possible are these TWM component uh, Wheel, captive wheel spacers. So even as I pull on it, you can see it doesn't come out. Yes. So you can look all this up on the Moto Million website, set yourself up. It'll make your life a lot better while you're changing tires. So this is what's called forged carbon fiber. If you look, this is carbon fiber weave on the outside here. Yep. It looks, it has a pattern, it goes straight. This is patternless. Yes, so it's yes. pieces of carbon pressed together very hard. Heated and pressed, I'm not exactly sure on the process, but it's like forged, so it's yeah. stamped and heated. So the cool thing about that is it has no direction. This you can clearly see has a direction. Yeah. So this is strong in the direction of this weave. This has no direction, so it's strong in every direction, which is why when you compress it and make something like this, you can make strong components. So in this case, they made spokes. Yeah. So the spokes are supporting our wheel. And then the last cool thing about this wheel, if you look, look how this is like hexagon shaped, I think it's six sides, yeah. Yes. One, two, three, four, yeah, so we got a hexagon shape here. So it's not round. So when your power is applied to the sprocket here, it's trying to twist this hub out of the wheel, which uh, there's pictures floating around happening to a stock BMW wheel, because it's round. Yeah. With this shape, that can't happen. And you can see they actually have little fasteners 
holding it in place. So not only is it glued in place, it's also fastened in place and it's not a round shape. So it should spread out that energy more even and not have any problems. So that's why we're using these wheels. Yes. Totally awesome. Let's pump up our rear brake again. Awesome. Yep. Snug the rear axle nut up. Next time we'll finish installing our 520 chain and sprocket. We got an awesome EK Gold 3D chain. Yep. Uh, same one we used on the Yamaha. I think uh, same one we used on the Kawasaki too. It's not gonna yep. be quite as long though. Yes. It's gonna be a little bit shorter. Yep. And uh, of course, matching front sprocket. So we'll get that on and we'll get the front wheel on next time. So stay tuned. Yep. But right now I think we have an amazing rear wheel and swing arm combination going on here. It's beautiful, Zach. Gorgeous and functional. Yes, and functional. All right, Mr. Zach. All right, well, thanks for watching everyone. Make sure you check out the next videos. We've got some great stuff coming up. Yep. And uh, we'll see you then. All right, so it was a nice long video, but we got a lot of stuff done today in this episode of the new bike build series. That underslung uh, caliper looks absolutely amazing. Uh, you can get it from Motor Million, discount code 650EB. This is going to be another tough choice for somebody to choose between that S1000 RR or the Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. You might be that lucky person. Information on how you can win and select one of these bikes is down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell so you can get notified when new content is uploaded. Look at this beauty as it sits here on Zach's bench. This is just a piece of rolling jewelry and art right here on this beautiful motorcycle. Wow. Just wait till it's fully completed with an exhaust and all of the other carbon fiber parts that we're gonna bestow onto this beautiful machine, thanks to Miami Mammy Manny at Moto Million. All right, guys, thanks so much for viewing this video. We'll catch you next time on the 650E YouTube channel. What a beautiful bike.